Okay, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. This has been so exciting because I know a lot of you don't hear this stuff in the pulpit and you need to, you should be hearing it. But anyway, I'm back with Teresa and she's going to finish up and let you know what's on her heart as we close. And we thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Teresa. Go on and continue with, with what the Lord is laying on your heart to say right now. Well, thank you, Pat, for the opportunity of telling my testimony because I made a promise to God. I, I said, God, you get me out of this mess. Give me back my home, my income, my insurance, my mind. I said, anybody that would listen to me, I, I, I would tell you, I would tell this story, Lord, for your honor and your glory, yes. because you were the only one, you were my only hope, and right. you, you are an answer to prayers, mm -hmm. an answer to prayers. Well, and I hope this blesses some people out there that's listening, because, friend, being through what I went through over, over my years, that witchcraft, it, it's dark. It's dark. They might want, they, you might hear on TV, oh, um, we're, we're a tree hugger. We worship Mother Nature. Uh, we don't do anything bad. We don't believe in uh, casting spells to hurt anyone. Well, whether this is what they believe, but they got other things on his agenda for it. And I'm telling you that, like uh, my little incident with the Ouija board, with the psychic, um, it, yes, it, it did tell me the truth. But like, but like Jesus says, there might be a little bit of truth in it, but how much of a lie are you being led into? So true. And yes, yes. So... I'm telling you, people, it, it, don't don't play with the. Uh, if you think it, that nothing's going to happen to you over the phone with a psychic, you're wrong. If you go to a psychic to get answers, you don't get what you deserve to get. But down just down and out, it's all a lie. It's just to suck you in. It's just right. to bring you further and further. Right. And the farther you get into into it, the more you'll do. And because uh, you know, oh, nothing happened to me, you know, nothing happened to me because I went to a psychic. Um, I went and got my tarot cards read, and lo and behold, they told me what happened to my past. They told me what my present was. And they told me, they told me what I was. Well, friend, I, I hope you know what familiar spirits are. Tell because us. Because spirits, demons, been on you in your past. They're with you in the present. And I mean, not if you're a born again Christian, don't get me wrong. Not with the Lord. Right. They know what your past off is. They know what your present situation is. They'll tell you what you want to hear in your future. Oh, they'll tell you what you want to hear in your future. Gotcha. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not saying that what they tell you in the future will come past or not. I do not know. I, I, I'm i not going to go there with the, with the demon thing. But right. it, whatever it is, you know, like ghost hunting, um, you might not think that ghost hunting is a bad thing, going to a graveyard or to a haunted house. Mm. But I'm telling you that you can get these spirits attached to you. Yes! That you can get spirits attached to you. That is very exactly. true. Yeah, they can get attached to you. Oh, they're attached to you. You know? You don't uh, even know so it. You don't late. even know it. No, you don't know it until too late. Well, I'm not saying it's too late. God is always, Jesus is always your hope. Right, right. And he's our deliverer. But until you get down on your knees and you cry out with yes. all your heart, with yes. all your mind, and all your spirit, Jesus will lift you up. Yes. 
I'm a witness. He will lift you up out of the fiery mess. Yes. The, 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 you know what I'm trying to say. Yes, he'll lift you up out of the pit. Yes, he will. That's yes, me. he will. Lift you up out of the miry clay. Lift you up out of, out of being drowned, out of your grave. He will lift you up. Yes. He will lift you up. And and his he's got so many unemployed angels. Mm-hmm. They're waiting for something to do. Yes. And so I ask the Lord, that's, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm sure that's what God intended them to do, to be man's helper. Yes. Yes, and exactly. Because when I was a baby, when I was a baby Christian, when I knelt down and I asked the Lord, please, Lord, I'm just, I'm just learning. I don't know a lot. I, I can't recite scriptures or verses. I don't know. I said, I need your help. Please send your angels with their swor- uh, swords drawn for battle. To protect me, and that's what he did. Yes. Whatever was in my room left, and yes. it left with a mighty crack. Yes, with a vengeance. <laughs> I tailed out of there. Stay. <laughs> they can't stay when you got Jesus on your side and you got angels that's encamped right. around you, and Jesus has got them on an assignment. They can't stay. That's right. That's they right. can't stay. So. I just hope this strengthens people, but remember, anything that's in darkness, that's what it is. It's dark. Mm-hmm. You might you might solve pain. You might think it's uh, having um, going out and, and being a ghost hunter or whatever. You don't know what you're bringing home. Right. You don't know what, what you're bringing upon your family. It might not bother you. But, but it might kids. bother your children. Yes. It might bother your pets. Whoa. And it might it might bother, you know, and you just don't know. You don't know what can you I, can do. So why take the chance? Can I, I, I want to interrupt here, babe. Uh something just popped in my head. And I want you guys to hear this. Teresa, you are so on the money with this one. I feel it in my spirit. Listen, you guys, I have heard stories, and I know you have too. Have, uh, listen, Teresa, have you heard of stories where a person has had a pit bull or a dog or Rockweiler or somebody's that are just so mild and, and sweet with their kids and everything's fine and it's been fine for years, and then all of a sudden they moral or gnaw or, 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 or claw at that child and... and literally attack them until they're dead and the person's child is is it has been mangled by this by this pet that all of a sudden exactly. turn and they're wondering well what caused it some of you do not realize demons work through animals and i know it's a yeah. fact because i've seen it with my own two eyes i have walked down the street and yes ma'am i've seen a dog charge me and it was a pit bull and pit bulls don't charge to play this was a vicious dog he was always kept on a very thick long chain in his yard but this time i don't know what he did but he got off the chain and i was walking up a driveway in the middle of the night to visit with my buddy and she was in the back house her tv was on so she didn't hear me but I'm walking down the driveway and I don't see the dog. So I am hoping with all hope that that dog is in the house. And I hear uh-huh. the pitter pat of little doggy feet and they're not walking. They're charging. I could tell and I could hear the breath and I hollered before I could even get my eyes on them. Good. I hollered. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And that dog, dug his nails, I heard it loud loud and clear, into the cement and to stop himself like a wheel skidding on the road. And it slid, you could hear it scraping across the cement. And when he yeah. he's, he stopped, his, he landed his hinds on the, on the ground and he just sat there as if somebody said, heal, heal. You know how people command their dogs to do different things and to sit. And he just sat and sat and sat. He wouldn't move and I wasn't moving. 
I just kept repeating, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker and I have a big mouth. And the owner heard me yell, I bind you in the name of Jesus. He opened the door to see what was going on. He called his dog inside. That dog did not touch me because he could not touch me. But there are That's demons right. that jump in and out of animals at an opportune moment to attack people that they have their sights on. Don't play. Exactly. Don't play. You think you can play with these things. You cannot play because when Teresa said you will bring a demon home and the demon may not affect you, but that demon will have his sights on one of your children. You better leave this crap alone. I'm telling you, it's That's for right. real. That's right. Well, as a matter of fact, when I was when I was in my childhood home, um, when we was playing with the Ouija board, we had a beagle, and um, of course, uh, maybe your your viewers have ever heard this: the animals can sense things. Yes, they can see, they can see things. That, uh, well, one day I was li I, my living room, and our little beagle, her name was Lola, started barking. I looked over at her. And she was staring at a wall behind our couch. Mm. Her hair from the tip of her tail to to the top of her head was standing up. Wow. Again, on the other side of that wall was a room where we did the Ouija board. Oh, look at that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This stuff and, is real. And, uh, then uh, one other time I can remember is that um, I don't know if anybody, I, I'm 59, so I can remember old Dennis and Dr. Cherry's that was nothing but pure leather. Yes, that yes. You walk in, you sit in. Well, we had one of those type of chairs in our living room. And one day I walked, we had a, uh, from uh, the hallway from where we used to play the Ouija board. Back in that way, it was our bedroom, then my father back was the bathroom. But to get to the kitchen, you walk through the living room and pass this chair to get into the kitchen. I glanced over at this chair, and God help me, it looked like someone was sitting in that chair. Oh, my goodness. You could see the butt prints, like it, someone was sitting in Yes, the pressure God, points. Oh, my and goodness. Chair. Yeah. So, you know, even though you might not deal with wish that, or even though that you may not, you might not um, go on ghost hunts or whatever, playing a Ouija board or doing tarot cards or uh, this, um, one a while back I seen on Facebook, he was doing this, um, what is it, I Charlie thing or something like that, mm. where they were trying to set up this demon called Charlie. Or oh, my like goodness. Yes. You do any of that. Any of that, you, you, you just have, all you gotta do is just crack, just crack a door or a window, and the demons and devil will fling that sucker in and knock your door right off the hinges to get in. That's right. That's right. Yep. It's yes. like a flood. Yes. There's yes. a scripture that says, "When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will exactly. lift the standard." But let me tell you, when you crack the door. And some of you crack the door by flirting with folks you have no business flirting with because you're married. Some of you crack that door because you're willing to make a business deal that you know, that you know is not right. But you know it's going to bring in a quick buck and then you'll be done with it. You're opening doors. It's not just playing with, with, with uh, Ouija boards and, and tarot cards and psychics. It's playing with the sins of life. Any sin that you're willing to go to bed with, baby, you are opening the door. You are literally inviting the demons in. And you think you're not, but you are. Some of you think that because you can go somewhere and you can watch a movie like Harry Potter, or you can watch some of these witchcraft programs and, and, and be entertained, and even some of the magicians. You think all that is fun and cute and, and enticing and fascinating. Ooh, did you see that? Ooh. Ooh, how did he do that? Well, guess what, baby cakes? You are entertaining something that you do not understand. And you better leave that baby alone and denounce everything. If you've given your heart to the Lord, for those of you who are trying to live for God, honestly trying, 
denounce everything that any of your family members, you, anybody has been involved in, in those sins and in those, those sources of entertainment that have to do with the dark side. There are many programs I will not watch, many movies I will not allow my eyes and my ears to entertain because I refuse to allow any demonic anything have a right, exactly. have a right. And when you give them a legal right, baby, hmm, you better have hmm. another legal right to get rid of them. And don't do EV. Don't do what? Uh, voice phenomenon. A lot of people, they can download apps on their phone and they can just go into their house, whatever they think might be there and say, is there anyone there? Oh. Um knock on the wall or uh, make a noise. No, that draws them in too. Yes. Them in too. Oh my goodness. What's the name of those apps that you've heard of? And they're called EVP, the Electronic Voice Phenomenon. Okay, uh, EVP. Mm -hmm. uh, apps on the phone that you can download for free. And, you know, like, a, you know, it, your loved one, you want to know if they're okay, are they near you? You know, you might just have lost them tragically or by death or even by natural means. And you just want to know, are they okay? Are they out of pain? And they might just simply get on, you know, get on. They, you can buy these, they're like, they're all the artists just um, handheld recorders, right? Right, right. And you just, you know, talk to them. No, no, no. You're not talking to your loved one, Tom. That's right. You're not talking to your loved ones. Mm. They not can imitate all. your loved ones because like Teresa said earlier, those are what you call familiar spirits. They're familiar with you and they're familiar with the ones you're, because they network with each other. <sighs> Come on over here. I need you to play this role for me so we can sucker in a little deeper. And you think you're yes, talking to somebody you know. It's a demon, baby. The whole, the yes. Satan is the father of lies. Exactly. Stop falling for the lies. A long time. Right. They've been around and they know everything. They're, they're not stupid. Right. I mean, they may not come into a Christian home per se, but if you got unsaved loved ones that live with you or... Uh, you know, they, they, they have been around for as long as Adam and Eve. Right. So, you know, they, they know everything about you or your family. So, you know, and then like she said, do they communicate with each other? Right. If one doesn't know, they'll ask another one. Right. Right. And I, and I had a pastor I've seen on TV make a mention. I can't remember the name of the movie, but on the movie... Um, during the course of the movie, they were uh, they were using actual name of demons. Ah! They were trying to sum up demons on the movie. And you don't know what you're going to bring home. That's you don't right. know what's going to open up the door. Mm. You know what? Thank you so much, Teresa. This has been so rich. Let me tell you guys, I'm going to say this in closing. I want to tell you right now that there are things that happen to people and you think it's a, a freak accident or you think it's a weird happenstance and somebody, their parent, their brother, their sister, their child, whatever, has, or even them, they may have opened the door. But I'm telling you, it's very easy to open the door for Satan to come in. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior, it is no way you're going to get him out. So I remember I felt an evil in my house when I was unsaved. I hadn't gotten saved yet. I was right on the verge. I was right there that last year before I gave my heart to the Lord, I started going to church. And I felt this evil. And I didn't have the power to use the name of Jesus. I didn't have the right. But the only thing I knew, I had an old dusty Bible in the house and I turned to Psalms 23 and I read God's word. And even though I didn't have anything, God's word always does what it's sent to do. And that, that evil left from me reading that scripture. But that was my first time experiencing that. But I'm telling you right now, 
You have got to close and seal the doors with the blood of Jesus. If the blood of Jesus yes. is not on your doorpost, this is this is uh, figuratively speaking from the Old Testament. If the blood of Jesus is not on your house, is not in your body, is not in your life, you are apt to be subject to a lot of demonic activity. If you are ignorant to the word because you don't want to read it, if you're ignorant to the ways of the enemy because your church is not teaching you the wiles of the devil, you better get in that Bible and read and teach yourself in Ephesians. You need to read the book of Ephesians. You need to read the book of Galatians so you'll understand what real sin is. You need to read the book of of uh, 1 Corinthians 13 so you'll know what real love is and how real love acts. I'm telling you, you need to start seeing the comparisons. Watch how Jesus lived. Watch how he handled things. What would Jesus do? What would he not do? And that's what you don't do. You have to really, really do everything you can to, to pursue a life of holiness, to pursue the Lord, pursue an intimate relationship with God. And I, I'm not going to talk much longer because this has been so rich and I don't want to beat a dead horse. But listen, you guys, because I know a lot of you are going in one ear and out the other. I'm asking you, take heed to these warnings that Teresa has shared with you. Take heed to them. Do not keep toying with your soul because when it becomes everlastingly too late, you will have hell to pay. And that is my final Amen. word on that. Teresa, thank you so much. This has been such a blessing. It's so rich. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for doing this with me. See, folks, this is what I mean when I say as a YouTube uh, thing, and you know I'm going to start a, a, a um, an online church called God's Remnant Global Online Church. The reason that we're doing this is because we need to collaborate. We are saints all over this world, all over this country, and we need to collaborate together and pull together our experiences, our knowledge, our wisdom, so that we can warn the world together. We can help each other walk in this, in this light without allowing any darkness to infiltrate our pathway. We love you. We bless your name, Lord. We praise you. And I love you, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Teresa, we will do this again. I thank you so much. And you can say goodbye to the audience before I um, uh, before we go. Well, thank you, listeners. Uh, I hope you took this to heart. And just remember what Jesus said. You got to keep Jesus in your heart. Because once your house is swept clean, the devil can come back and he can bring back seven times more worse than what you had. That is the, the I'm leaving on that point because I meant to say that and forgot. And God made sure that you guys heard this. God bless you. You hear me? God bless you. And you take heed. Okay. Amen. Thanks.